Imagine equipping your backyard or your business parking lot with Wi-Fi 7 speeds, so fast and so stable that you'll feel like you're plugged directly into Ethernet. Today we're going to be taking a first look at Grandstream's GWN 7670LR Wi-Fi 7 Outdoor Access Point, and this thing might just be redefining what outdoor networking should look like. This is Grandstream's latest long-range, high-performance outdoor Wi-Fi 7 access point. Let's take a look at what comes inside the box, the specs, the features, and then you could determine whether or not this deserves a space in your home network or your next business deployment. Inside the box, you do get some paperwork, including certification regulatory information and a quick start guide. You get the Grandstream GWN 7670 long range access point, a two part metal mounting bracket that can be mounted either on a wall or optionally on a pole. You get two omnidirectional antennas. You get a bag of mounting hardware. You do get the extra sticker containing the MAC address and the initial Wi Fi password. This information can also be found on the back of the unit. And finally, you get two metal adjustable rings for that optional pole mounting. Looking at the unit, it is a pretty massive device. You can see it in relationship to my hand, but to give you a better appreciation, let's put it next to a NAS hard drive. There you could really appreciate its true size. Even though it's large in size, it's very well built and it's got a pretty sleek design. On the front, we have the Wi-Fi 7 branding, the status indicator, and on the bottom, we have the Grandstream branding. If you follow my fingers down the device, you can see the contour in the lighting, which gives it that nice, sleek design. On the side of the unit here, we don't have much going on, but on the other side, we do have a signal indicator, and that's in place for future point-to-point -point and point-to-multi-point functionality. Let's take a look now at the back of the unit. It is made of metal, which nicely acts as a heat sink. We have our compliance sticker here and our Grandstream sticker here with the serial number, MAC address, and initial password. We do have a grounding lug here, and then we have our removable door. But before I remove the door, let's flip it up this way. You can see the entry ports for the cabling, and you do have nice rubber gaskets there to keep it watertight. To release the door, just lift this little lever here, and then slide like so. Once the door is off, you can see the 2.5 gigabit PoE port, and then the SFP. It's also a 2.5 gig SFP port, and then the reset button there. Finally, on the top of the unit, we have the area to attach our two external antennas. So just remove the protective rubber coverings and then screw on the two antennas. Now, again, these are omnidirectional antennas, and you can switch between using the omnidirectional antennas and the internal directional antenna on this device. So there's the entire unit assembled. And now let's take a look at how the mounting bracket attaches to this. So the first part of the mounting bracket attaches using these four holes right here. And then once that's attached to the device, the device will be able to swivel on the other mounting bracket. It'll be able to swivel up and down. Okay, before we go any further looking at the specs or doing the initial setup, I'm curious, are you using any outdoor gear at the present time? Let me know down in the comments. All right, so let's take a quick look at the key specs for this device. It supports 3.6 gigabits per second wireless aggregate throughput. It's integrated Wi-Fi 7, dual band, 2x2x2 MIMO. Yep, I said dual band. It's not a tri-band device. It supports up to 350 meter coverage range, up to 256 concurrent client devices. It has advanced QoS. It supports anti-locking, secure boot, and critical data control lockdown via digital signatures. It supports PoE+. Plus. It can be managed with its own controller, which also will support up to 50 GWN Grandstream access points. It can be managed by GDMS.cloud and GWN Manager. Also, the maximum power consumption is 15.5 watts, and the future point-to-point, point-to-multi-point -point, point -point range is up to 1.5 kilometers. So the question is, who is this device for? And the answer could be really anyone who needs a solid Wi-Fi experience in an outdoor space or semi-outdoor environment. For example, outdoor camera networks, a festival, a campground, a marina, a farm, warehouses, a backyard space, just to name a few. In fact, let me know down in the comments below how you would deploy a device such as this.
All right, so let's go through the initial setup of the Grandstream GWN 7670LR. And if you stick around, I may even show you how to create some SSIDs and attach them to VLANs. So let's get started. I'm at the login page. Now, I got here by opening up my browser and pointing my browser to the IP address of the device. I found that in my router's client IP table. We're here, we're at the login page. Let's get logged in. The default username for all Grandstream devices is admin in lowercase. I have the password that I found on the back of the unit. You can also get it on that little extra um, sticker that they give you in the box. So let's put that in here. And now we have an option here, primary or subordinate. Let's talk about this for a minute. With the primary versus subordinate, what you want to do here is set it up. If it's going to be a master, you're going to want to set it up as your primary device. If you want to add this device to an existing Wi-Fi network that already has a master, you're going to let the other master pair this device. Do not select the option for subordinate. I did learn that the hard way. So back to the login page. Again, we're going to leave it set as primary, which is going to make this device the master controller. So we will be using the embedded controller on this unit. Let's go ahead and get signed in. All right, so we're signed in. We're presented with the setup wizard first thing. Let's go ahead and click next to start the setup wizard. And here we have the GWN 7670LR, the MAC address, the IP address that it obtained from the DHCP server. The firmware is version 1.0.25.13, which I have confirmed is the latest version as of the date of this video. And then we're going to go click on next to continue. Here we're going to set up our first SSID. So by default, it gives you some options for an SSID, but we're going to change the default and I'm going to call this trusted. So it'll be my trusted Wi-Fi. We're going to change the security mode to WPA3. Now, if you have some older devices, you might want to set it to WPA2, WPA3, because they won't connect to WPA3. And if you're still having problems with devices connecting, even with this setting here, then drop it back down to WPA2. We're going to create a pre-shared key, which is the password. And then we already have the device down in the member area, meaning that this SSID will be applied to this unit. Let's go ahead and complete the setup. Okay, now it's applying the changes. Once the changes are applied, we'll go ahead and take a further look into the user interface. All right, so if we come over to the SSID area, you could see now here's the trusted network that we just set up. Now, if we want to set up, let's say, a guest network or an IoT network, let's do that here. We can add an SSID for each. So let's go ahead and add the guest network first. And then let's enable it. And then here, if you want to attach your guest network to, let's say you have a guest VLAN already set up on your router and your switch, simply click the VLAN box and put in the VLAN ID here. So we'll put in the VLAN ID of 20, assuming that that's our guest network VLAN ID. And then what this means is any device that connects to the guest network, you will get an address and be placed automatically on the guest network. So we're going to go ahead. I like to leave my guest network set to 2.4 and to WPA2. Now you have other options, like you can limit the amount of bandwidth you give them on the download and the upload. But for now, we're just going to leave it like this. We'll create the pre-shared key. And then we will come over to device membership and make sure that we move the Grandstream GWN 7670LR into the member box. So now that the SSID for the guest will also be applied to that device and we'll go ahead and we'll click save. We'll go ahead and apply the changes. And while that's applying, we'll go ahead and we'll get ready to add the IoT network. All right, and now let's go ahead and click the add button and we'll add the IoT network. Same thing, we're going to enable the SSID. We'll click the VLAN box and we'll attach it to VLAN ID 30, assuming that that is your IoT VLAN. And then for the SSID band, I'm going to set it to 2.4. That's my preference. I do that because some of the older smart devices 
don't connect to the Wi-Fi if it senses that the 5 gigahertz band is being broadcast. So the newer devices are coming out. They do support 5G, but I like to play it safe. So I leave it set at 2.4 gigahertz. And then I'm going to put in another password. Again, we'll come over to device membership. Make sure we add the device to the member area so that this new IoT Wi-Fi gets assigned to this device and it broadcasts out. And we'll go ahead and we'll say save. And again, we'll go ahead and apply the changes. All right, so here's my early verdict. The GWN 7670LR looks to me to be a very strong contender in the outdoor space. You're getting rugged hardware, impressive specs, various management options, and next-gen Wi-Fi performance all in one device. All right, so let me know. Will the GWN 7670LR earn a spot in your network? Let me know down below in the comments. So if you found any value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And if you're interested in seeing more Grandstream Wi-Fi configurations, please click the video on the screen. Thank you so much for watching.